During World War II, the Germans developed tanks so powerful that they were admired around the world, despite the country's gruesome actions. But after the war ended, Germany was disarmed, and its industry struggled to persist. A decade later, as the nation was struggling to rebuild, the situation in now Western Germany was dire, threatened by the communist ban. However, backed by NATO and supported by other friendly European nations, Germany sought to hold its technological reputation as it put its sights on building a main battle tank for the entire continent. Stripped from the knowledge that had allowed the creation of the legendary Panther and Tiger, the Germans would go another route and create an entirely new vehicle. The Leopard 1 took several risks and put speed and mobility over heavy armor, hoping the gamble would pay off and mark the beginning of a new era in tank technology. Tides of War Germany crafted some of the finest tank designs ever seen during World War II. And with such a legacy, it would seem obvious that post-war models would be extensions of proven technology coming from the legendary Panther and Tiger series. However, Germany's first such tank would be an entirely new thing. After the nation's unconditional surrender in May of 1945, the Allies made sure that all military production facilities were dismantled. Thus, the Germans were forced to begin from scratch when they were allowed to continue with the tradition. Still, the context dramatically changed in 1947 when Western Germany had to face the Soviet threat. As a result of its rearmament effort, the mangled country would produce a cutting-edge tank, one of the most impressive main battle tanks ever built on European soil. The new MBT's early development began a decade after the end of the war. When the Federal Republic of Germany was invited to join the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, the country was allowed to rearm, while the country's remarkable industrial recovery facilitated the reconstruction of a capable defensive force. A joint enterprise was envisioned, taking advantage of the cordial Franco-German relationship at the moment and the fact that both nations had similar specifications on paper. Italy would also join the venture within a few years. The project, later known as Europanzer, was thus born, with the objective to equip several Western European countries with a locally made vehicle and complement or forthright replace the US supplied tanks the continent possessed, such as the M47 and M48. The German Standard Panzer project began in November of 1956, and the specifications were released months later. The Enterprise called for a tank with 30 metric tons of weight, a power-to-weight ratio of 30 horsepower per ton, and armor able to withstand rapid 20mm hits. In addition, the tank had to withstand nuclear, biological, and chemical warfare environments, and have amphibious capabilities. In terms of armament, the tank had to be fitted with the recently selected British L7 105mm rifle gun and as new hollow charges posed a significant threat and could penetrate any type of armor, protection was deemed secondary, with mobility and firepower taking the lead. Consequently, the traditional heavy armament style was left in the past, and a new focus was placed on speed as the tank's protection. A competition. Three German teams and one French team would enter the competition, and the Germans soon began working on delivering two prototypes each. The vehicle would be the first post-war tank designed and built in West Germany. During its development, Phase II raised the weight limit of the prototypes, and by 1960, they were ready to be tested. Team A, led by Porsche, showed Model 734, while Rheinmetall's Team B handled a higher cast turret, and Borgvard-led Team C developed a somewhat futuristic design with an impressive automatic gun. Still, the latter failed to produce any prototype on time. Shortly after, Team A was assigned to build 26 pre-series prototypes, and Team B another six. Then, in 1963, Porsche was officially announced as the winner, with an order of 50 pre-series vehicles. By then, the French specifications had diverged considerably, and they developed the AMX-30 separately. 
The pre-production design designated as Zero Series featured a new cast turret and a raised rear engine deck for future upgrades, while a more advanced optical range-finding system was mounted to improve accuracy and long-range and indirect fire. Conceived in a conventional layout, a fireproof bulkhead divided the hull into an engine compartment aft and a crew compartment forward. The driver was to the hull's right, while the commander and the gunner were in the turret on the right and the loader on the left. Even though the Leopard 1 was not as sturdy as the Soviet vehicles it was designed to combat, it was still nonetheless heavily armored and gunned. At its maximum, the armor measured 2.75 inches, with a minimum of 0.33 inches at the top. On the other hand, turret armor ranged from 2 inches on the front to 2.4 inches on the sides and rear, and a 2.4 inch thick mantlet furnished the front for additional turret protection. An 830 horsepower Daimler Benz V10 diesel engine provided the necessary thrust to maintain road speeds of 40 miles per hour and a range of 372 miles. Moreover, the engine was crafted so it could be extracted and replaced within 20 minutes while on the battlefield. In addition, its main armament, consisting of a 105mm L7 gun, could fire an armor piercing projectile at nearly 4,500 feet per second. Besides, the tank was additionally fitted with a 7.62mm NATO coaxial machine gun and another mounted on a ball pivot for anti-aircraft fire. The optical gun sight later replaced the coaxial machine gun to estimate the range for the main gun. Keeping with the tradition of World War II era feline races, the series was named after the Leopard, also in reference to its mobility focus. The first batch setup took place in Munich in 1964 and the Leopard 1 entered service by September of the following year. Global Interest When deliveries ended in mid-1966, many other European countries, as well as several foreign nations, began ordering the new MBT. As tank museum curator David Willey explained, the tank, quote, became an enormous sales success. In the end, 15 countries ended up using the Leopard in various forms. Many variants sprang up from the original chassis, and they were sold all over the world, while always keeping the balance between speed and mobility the priority. Four configurations stemmed from the basic Leopard 1. The A1 had a gun stabilization system, new tracks, and a thermal heat sleeve on the main gun. Later, the version morphed into the A1A1, with an additional bolt-on armor. The A2 featured a stronger cast steel turret, enhanced NBC protection systems, and night vision image intensifier equipment, while the A3 was configured with a new spaced armor and an integral storage bin at the back of the turret. This new armor consisted of several sloped planes featuring a characteristic wedge-like mantlet. Finally, the A4 had a more advanced fire control system. In total, 6,325 Leopard 1 tanks, including all configurations, were built, ranging from armored recovery vehicles armored engineer vehicles, bridge layers and anti-aircraft vehicles, to training vehicles. 3,602 were made in West Germany alone. The Leopard 1 was also manufactured by OTO Malara in Italy. And apart from Germany, nine other countries operated the tank, namely Australia, Belgium, Canada, Denmark, Greece, Italy, the Netherlands, Norway, and Turkey. In truth, the model was present in nearly all European countries, with the notable exception of France and Great Britain. To this day, many experts regard the Leopard 1 as one of the best, if not the best, main battle tank. It was extensively replaced by the Leopard 2 in the 1980s, but the legendary tank is still in service around the world, with its legacy continuing to live on. Thank you for watching our video. Please subscribe to all of our Dark Documentaries channels for more historical anecdotes, adventures, and technological marvels. And don't forget to hit the thumbs up button and tell us what you think of the Leopard 1 tank in the comments below. Stay tuned.